Hey everybody, Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. I uh, hope you're all having a great day. I am here with my teaching partner, Max Massiano. Max, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. How are you, Dennis? I am good. I am good. We are uh, doing this little recording of the chat uh, just here, not long away from the Super Bowl, which happens tomorrow. And um, of course, I do not have a favorite in that game, so I'm going to root for the underdog. So go Bengals. That's what the big thing is. But uh, today, I think I, I just want to, there's so many things we can choose to talk about today. Um, I, I want to spend a few minutes talking about some are, you know, for those people who are just getting started in this business. I, I don't know about you, but gosh, you know, I, I, I love the school I attended when I went to beauty school. And, and I loved my instructors. They were all great people. But I realized when I graduated from beauty school that I didn't know, I didn't know half of what I needed to know to really be successful in the business. I mean, that, <laughs> that's what led me to my, my first hair color nightmare of several, <laughs> which happened to occur on my best friend's mother. <laughs> and so, you know, it was emotionally <laughs> a drag on me on top of that. And I think a lot of times, uh, I think we go into this industry with a preconceived idea. And I think that comes from being, we get inspired by either, you know, family members that do hair, or we get inspired by the people who do our hair. Um, it, it, it's a great profession. We get excited because, you know, they're being creative and in an environment, you know, you've got great music, you've got lots of things going on to really get us excited about being a hairdresser. And then we go to beauty school and we realize what I have to do, what a finger wave. Why do I have to do a finger wave <laughs> or, or we get that, you know, we have all these basic things we have to understand. And then when we get out in the industry, we realize that school just really prepared us to pass the test. That's really what they yeah. did. It didn't really prepare us to be max to maximize our success. And so I, I would like to say to new people in this industry, you know, number one, you have to stay committed to this. I mean, you know, Max, we talked about statistics. And I think, uh, you know, when you consider that a majority of the people who attend beauty school within the first two years, they say a majority of those people drop out of the industry. I think you have the numbers on that, right? Yeah, it's actually 80% of beauty school graduates will be completely out of the industry within 24 months of graduating. Yeah. And yeah, that's and a that's, very, that's an alarming number. It is. And I think that happens for a multitude of reasons. You know, n number one, today in 2022, you know, the biggest goal for a lot of young people or new people in the beauty in the beauty school is that I want to get out and have my own solo salon suite. Mm -hmm. And so they want to get out and have their own chair, their own little cubicle. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. But there are some other things like business skills <laughs> that you didn't learn in beauty school, by the way that you need to have in place before you decide to open your own business. Yeah, and you might want to, you might want to have some clients too. Right. And how about some technical skills? Yeah. Because, you know, those things are important. Here's what we know. Statistics tell us that 83% of the reason consumers return to the same hairdresser have really nothing to do with their technical skills but has to do with the hairdresser's ability to have great people skills. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is to have great people skills and to have great technical skills. I've always said that if you have great people skills and your technical skills are mediocre, you can still find some degree of success Absolutely. a little bit. But if you are technically highly skilled, but your people skills are not good, you will have a trouble building a clientele. And that's yep. why I, for so many hairdressers, I've heard them say this to me. They say, I can't believe that person in that salon 
is doing that kind of work and they're, they're successful. And here I am, my technical skills are higher than theirs. And I don't have the same amount of people coming into my chair. Yeah. 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 And, I've, and worked, so, I've worked with both of those kinds of hairdressers. Right. You know, right. So I, I think there's just some extra work that has to be done. I, I remember reading this one time because they said homework doesn't stop just because you graduate from school. Homework is part of everyday life. And I think that with, when my children were younger, I wanted them to understand that homework doesn't go away when you graduate. Yeah. <laughs> it's just well, it's, a different kind of homework, but it has to be so done. It's so funny, Dennis, because I would have, was really fortunate this week to be on a Zoom call for one of my other gigs with Trevor Sorby. Ah. And if, if you guys don't know who Trevor Sorby is, you should, so Google that. And if you do, then you know what I'm talking about. And Trevor is probably the most highly awarded hairdresser in the world. He's been... Yes knighted by the queen of england you know he has a pedigree background and he's just generally a genius but he said something that was so profound that is dovetailing into what what you said dennis and he was like you know i tell my staff because he owns a bunch of salons in the uk he goes you still have to practice like, it's it's like playing a musical instrument or being in a sport you have to always keep trying to better your best. Right. There isn't, there isn't ever, and I think a lot of times, especially when we're new in the industry, you go, this class, I'm going to take this class and it's going to make me good. Or mm -hmm. it's going to do it. It's going to do it for me. And yeah, I mean, any education is better than no education. Right. So, but it's, it's always a progression of, adding more and more to that library in your head, in your right. heart, and in your hands that allow you to develop and evolve in this industry. Right. Well, you know, I was fortunate enough to be one of those lucky hairdressers that had an opportunity to work with Trevor. So I, I relate to everything you're sharing yeah. very easily. And um, I remember we used to talk about what you just you were just sharing about the fact that education alone is not enough so it goes to the saying of knowledge is power well there's a word missing from that statement right. and that is applied knowledge is power which means that knowledge doesn't mean anything unless you practice unless you apply it i'm going to give you a real life story max uh, I just had the opportunity to work with some educators uh, for a company and helping them to prepare to go into salons and troubleshoot. These are salons that have transitioned into their product line, into their hair color line, and they're going to go in and they're going to help coach them how to transition their formulations. And I think I did this training the second week in January, all right? And I just had an online meeting with them just the, just the other day, a day or two ago. Mm -hmm. And so in that training that we did, I had them doing dye outs, you know, on cotton. I also had them doing dye outs on swatches. And I told them part of their homework when they left was you have to continue to practice with different formulas so you understand your competitor because they're going to go in and they're going to be converting a salon and they have to kind of understand a little bit about the competitors that are in the marketplace. And so yeah. I had them all on screen here. And I said to him, I said, how many of you have done any more die outs since I saw you in January? None of them. Zero. They thought that was it. <clears throat> they thought they could hit the ground running. And now we're like almost 30 days later and they have about 
30 days remaining before they're supposed to go out into the field. Now they're very nervous. Well, I'm not sure mm. I know what, how to convert. I'm not sure. And I, and I say, you have to practice all the time. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that that's what I would say to anybody in this industry. How much time are you dedicating to practicing your craft? Because because you don't practice on your clients. I know people do, but you you don't want to do that. Right. You know, you want right. your clients to have confidence. I mean, that's the reason we have mannequin heads and we have all these other things where we can practice our craft and perfect it. And then when we take it to the salon and we're using it on our clients, then we know that we're that we're operating from a place of confidence, not a place of fear. Sure. And uh, and I think that's one of the things I think is most important is making sure that people stay committed to improving your craft. I, I've always said, you know, yeah, today I did a great job, but what can I do tomorrow to make it better? Yeah. You know, uh, that was a great, that was a great color. That was a great color, but what can I do to make it better? Because yeah. You really can do better. We can all do better. Every one of us. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, watching us this or listening to this on our podcast. We can all do better. But mm -hmm. we can't do better if we don't hold ourselves to a higher standard. Right. And, yeah. and I think that's an important thing. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I know, at least for me, good good enough isn't really in my vocabulary right you know it's like i i always i, I don't want it to be just fine i want it to be amazing right. you know i didn't i i never said you know like when i went to beauty school i think i want to be a mediocre hairdresser i don't think any of us <laughs> you know woke yeah. up woke up what kind of a and, goal is that how, yeah. What kind of I think I just want to be average ish. No, you yeah. want to be, you want to yeah. be the best. And, you know, like with, with that comes the gaining of more knowledge, but also right. you got to do something with it once you have it. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, you can take that down to the very, very basics. I mean, actually learning how to, control the comb in your hands. I mean, we won't even talk about color. Let's I mean, how many people have the dexterity they're able to control a comb in their hand? I cannot tell you how many times in my past I've had new staff members come on board and said, well, I can't blow dry the hair with my left hand. I said, well, why not? Right. Well, because I'm right-handed. And I said, in this business, you have to be ambidextrous. You need to be doing things with your left hand and your right hand both. I said, that's going to mess you up when you're cutting hair. If you, if you don't know how to do your potty position, understanding that you, your strongest side is only your right-handed only, you're going to have to change the way you set your body position when you're right. cutting hair, when you're doing a simple bob. A simple yeah. bob. A simple you know? bob. The same thing with color placement. Like when you're doing foil placement, Here's the funny thing. When I do a color placement program and I talk to hairdressers, I ask them, so I say, first of all, and we call it stitching. So when we lift the hair strand up out of the, mm -hmm. the mesh of hair, we call it a stitch. I said, you have to understand, do you stitch from the outside or do you stitch from the inside? Because that changes the width of your section. And they go, what do you mean? I said, watch, I stitch from the outside. I know that about myself. So when I push, lift, push, lift, push, lift, push, lift, push. So when I pull and separate the strand, my upper strand, my upper section, my upper mesh is more narrow than my bottom mesh. Mm -hmm. You say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, here's the big deal about that. If I'm doing highlights and lowlights in combination and I'm doing lowlights, and I stitch off the top and I want, I really don't want to give up too many highlights. If I stitch off the top and I do low lights, that's a narrow piece. I'm not going to get enough low lights in my hair. 
Mm -hmm. Because my mesh was too narrow, it's not going to show up. So do you stitch from the inside? That means you lift, push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. Because when you split that up, now what happens is my top section becomes wider, my bottom section becomes more narrow. I got to know that. Yeah. On, on top of that, what happens when I come around and I start, let's say I start on the right side of the head, and then I go to the left side of the head. Have you ever seen people where they, they're cognizant about foils? I have six here. I have to have six here. They're doing all of that. And yet at the end of their process, there's more highlight on one side than there is on the other. And they go, how did that happen? I have the same amount of foils. Yes, you do. But you do not have the same stitch pattern. Because when you change their body position, your stitching changed. Now, I don't know how I got down that trail, but it's just, again, part of those things. You know, we always are known for talking about formulation. I want you to know we do know how to cut hair. And we do know, right. how, to, and we do know how to do foils and balayage and all those other things. So it's about practicing. You know, you've heard me say this. We say this in our classes. Repetition is the mother of learning. Mm -hmm. So... Don't deny yourself that. Practice, practice, practice. Here's the funny thing. If you would take and devote 45 minutes a day, okay, 45 minutes a day, that's not even a full episode of Survivor, okay? And you would devote 45 minutes a day to practicing your craft in areas where you need improvement. Practice your craft 45 minutes a day. At the end of the year, the amount of time you have spent would be the same amount of time you would spend in one college course. Hmm. Wow. That, that is because we do not take advantage of our time. Yeah, I agree. You know, we have we have options. We we have options. I don't want to practice my craft. I'm going to go on social media. I don't want to do this. I'm going to do this. You know, if you want right. to be good at this craft and you want to accelerate your growth at this craft, you have to practice continually. Now, when I started out, that was the way I was trained. I had to bring in a model every night and practice during the week because that's the way I was trained. Yeah. And I don't think people do that today. I mean, maybe not, some. Yeah, not as prevalent, I don't think, now as it no. once was. No. And so those are the things I think that will help you. First of all, stay committed. And second of all, love this business. You know, it's okay if you don't love doing hair. You might find something else you love. Sure. You know, my passion has never faltered for this business because we give the good touch, man. Mm -hmm. We do the magic. Yeah. And people are willing to wear our magic 24 hours a day. They won't even do right. that for Oscar de la Renta. Yeah. They won't even do yeah. that. For... <laughs> so I think that that's what I would say to new people in this business. Um, first of all, never consider that you've reached and learned everything you need to know. Right. You know, it's, uh, it goes back to that old saying, um, when you stop learning, you start to rot. That's right. You know, and there's lots of people who do that. They figure, ah, I know it all. And now I can just coast. Yeah. And coasting is no fun. I always say, if you're not learning something new, at least every other day, I'll give you a break on every day. If you're not learning okay. something new, at least every other day, then we're not moving forward. And in this Surely. business, there's a multitude of things to learn. So there's an endless, about... endless array of subject matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I guess we kind of covered that, have we? Yeah, I'd say so. Dennis, uh, if you were going to give somebody new one piece of advice, what would that be? Mm. Well, it wouldn't be one piece. It would be a couple of things. 
Okay. So that would be Fire one. Away. Stay committed. Okay. Number two, don't believe your own press. Number three, realize that everyone has a color that will go sideways on occasion. The difference is, do you have the skills to bring it back to where it should be? You know why I say don't believe your own press? Why is that? Because we, we live in an endless world of compliments. Mm -hmm. Oh, Max, I love the way you did my hair. Oh, Max, you're the best. Oh, Max, you're the greatest. You know, you hear that often, often enough, pretty soon you're going to go, yeah, Max is pretty good. Just ask the last people, the last 10 people I saw. They'll tell you how great I am. And then we become a legend in our own mind. Sure, sure. You know, always remember where you came from. Just stay committed. Right. Have respect for this business and practice, practice, practice. Beautiful what would you say, said. Max? I say listen to my mentor who's <laughs> right over here because I'm going to tell you basically well, the same thing he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's a great business and we want Good. everyone to be successful. You know, yeah. we really do. Uh, we want to light the pathway for you so that you don't have the same challenges that we had to deal with. And there's an easy way to do that. It's just learn something new consistently and constantly ask more of yourself. Ask more of yourself every day. When you do that, you will be successful. And, you know, if you're watching this little chat on um, YouTube, we invite you to subscribe here to our YouTube channel. You can do that just down here below. Max is giving you the directions where to. If you are uh, watching us on Instagram, you can find uh, Max and I both on Instagram. And you can find Max at, uh, hold on, let me tell you. You can find Max at Max M. Hare. Uh, you can find our other team members, Yvette Fontani. You can find Yvette is at Yvette underscore Fontani. And then Erica Blancet, our other team member, you can find her at Erica Blancet. We also invite you to uh, check us out on our website, gurunation.net. Uh, <clears throat> if you have a hard time getting to that website, you can always go to my IG page and in my bio, you will see a link on Instagram at Linktree. Uh, and if you click on that, it will take you directly to our educational page on our website. Um, we have a Facebook page called Guru Nation. You're welcome to follow us there. And if you want to become part of our hair tribe, we invite you to apply for admittance and one of our admins will bring you in. So uh, those are all the good things that we hope you will take advantage of. And um, we hope you'll do that and stay with us. We appreciate everybody who follows us and uh, who hears our message. And so Max, we're gonna call it a, a day for this one. And- uh, All right. I thank you, my friend. It was good having a chat with you and everybody else. Always. Thank you so much Always. for watching. And so until I see you again, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. Max, I'm out. How about you? I am out of here. All right, everybody. Listen, take care. Be safe. Have a great Super Bowl weekend. See you all soon. Bye-bye.